Now we need to go through eMembers settings and make sure that they're set up in the most appropriate way. Go to WP eMember, Settings, and there's a very large number of settings arranged under these seven tabs at the top of the page. It's rather a daunting setup panel, certainly, but fortunately a lot of the settings can be left unchanged. But still, in any case, we'll go through them from left to right, from top to bottom, looking at the important settings and any changes that we may need to make. General settings first, and this will be the whole of this video. There are several language options, and they control the front-end messages displayed by eMember, and I'll leave it at English. For Allow Free Membership, you can decide whether you want to have free materials controlled by a membership level or not. We've already set up Level 2 for this purpose, so it's available if you want to make use of it. And I'll select Yes here, and I'll enter Level 2 as the Free Membership Level ID. Free members must confirm email address. Let's see what happens for both settings. When it's not selected, the registration form asks for a username, password, email and name. After clicking register, then you can log in straight away. And you can skip this extra second step. We can do that later. And then you're straight into the materials. When free members must confirm email address is selected, and we go to log in, we'll find that the registration form is replaced with a shorter one, asking just for the first and last name and the email address. And that will send a link to this email address, and only once the user's clicked on that can they register for an account. So they must verify the email. If you want to check that email addresses are genuine and actually belong to the account holder, then you should select this option. If you're comfortable with people possibly entering non-existent emails to get in, you can leave this unselected. On my site, I want it to be as easy as possible to get onto the site, at least for the moment, so I've left this unselected. If I have problems in future with a lot of invalid emails, then I can change it. Entries per page sets the number of posts per page or custom posts per page in the content protection section. So if you have a very large number of lessons, and you're using the global method of content protection, the bulk protection method, then you may want to set this to a high value, so that all the lessons, all the custom posts appear on one page, and you don't have to work through a series of pagination links. I'll set it first of all to 5, a ridiculously low number, just to show you clearly how it works. And we go back to Membership level, click on the Manage Content Protection tab, General Protection, Custom Posts, only five lessons are listed at a time. And in order to change the protection on them, we'd have to work through all those pagination links at the top. I've got a lot of lessons in my other course, so I'm going to set this to a high number, 200 entries per page, so that they'd all appear on one page, and I don't have to work through all those pagination links. And that's what it looks like now. If you enable more tag protection, then you can automatically use everything before the more tag as teaser text and protect everything which follows it. Enable public profile listing. How you set this depends on whether you think your members want their profiles displayed publicly or not. If it's a site with social interaction in mind, you'll want to select this. If you think your learners are more interested in your content than in each other, deselect it. Allow account deletion. I'll leave this deselected so that only I can delete accounts. Allow WordPress account deletion. Again, I'll leave this deselected. Enable secondary membership. It's vital that this is set to yes, at least for my type of site. Otherwise, members can only be a member of one level at a time. As levels equal courses, that's not what we want. So, if you're selling individual courses the way I am, this must be set to yes. 
Gravatar image in profile. I will leave deselected as I don't think my members want to see each other's images. And the same for the moment for the WordPress profile image. I'll leave this off. Enable custom fields allows us to customize the login and registration forms. These are in the last tab of the eMember settings pages. You can experiment with this later, but it's not vital for now. So I'm going to leave this off. Enable auto expiry email notification. I'll set this to yes, so that reminders are sent out before accounts expire. And you can customize the emails later when we get to the email settings tab. Manually approve member registration. No, that would be a lot of work. So I'll leave that deselected. Protect comments separately. By default, the protection of comments is controlled by the content protection settings. If you want to be able to set the protection of comments separately, you get another tab in the content protection settings, select this box here. Members must be logged into comment. If this is not selected, anyone can post comments on the site. Again, it's up to you. I'm going to allow comments by logged in users only i.e. my students. Enable Google First Click Free feature is an interesting option, one that only a few membership platforms offer. If you enable this, then people arriving via a Google search have free access to your protected content. There's a link on the settings page to more information about this, and also to Google's own information on it. Basically, the primary reason for enabling it would be to try to get more traffic for a new site that hasn't got many members. But in the process, you're giving your content away, so you risk devaluing it. And you risk alienating anyone who's actually paid for it. I'm going to leave that deselected. Format the post page protected message doesn't make any difference for the partial protection message. Turn off protected message formatting removes the styling from the message this contents for members only. So it's useful if you want to apply styling to that yourself. I quite like the styling, so I'm going to leave that deselected. Login widget title, that's self-explanatory. We just set up the eMember login widget, and this is where you can customize its title. If you leave it empty here, the title, the default title, is Member Login. Enable After Login Redirection is important. You need to select this so that redirection after login to specific pages or courses is possible. So make sure that is selected. Enable Auto Login After Registration is optional. If you want to make it very easy to get onto the site, then select this, so the extra step of logging in straight after you've registered is removed. I'm going to select that. If you want to display an RSS feed on the member's profile page, then check Display Secure RSS Feed. And there's the RSS link displayed. But on my site, I'm going to disable that. Display a link to Members Welcome page does just what it says. Here it is enabled. And disabled. I'm going to leave it disabled. In order to get the next option, the fancy login widget and pop-up to work, we have to change the login widget itself. Open up a new tab. Go to Appearance, Widgets, and delete the WP eMember login widget by dragging it over to Available Widgets and add a simple text widget instead. We title that member login. And we have to use the eMember shortcode, WP eMember, notice the capital M, that's important or it won't work, Compact Login. 
put in the widget logic code. We could have used is home for this, but we're, I'm using is page four. Then click save. If we enable it here with style one, click update options, refresh the page, click on login, and that's style one. Go back and change it to style two. Update again. Refresh the page, and this is style two, a modal login with a pop-up style. I'm actually going to disable it. Go back to the widgets, and I'll put back the standard uh, WPE member login widget. So that's gone now, we're back to normal. The disable inline login widget option didn't seem to make any difference when I tried it. I tried it on and off, not quite sure what that does, didn't do much for me. Login restriction by IP address is a feature designed to prevent people from sharing their credentials. If the system finds that a user is logging in from many different IP addresses, that's suspicious. It could be a sign that one account is being used by multiple users. People are stealing your content. So if you want to set this, a typical number to set as the maximum here might be three or four. If you want people to be auto-logged out after a period of inactivity, you can set the number of minutes here. I'm leaving it empty. Disable simultaneous member login is another security feature. If this is set, then more than one user cannot log in to the same account at the same time. So it's another way of protecting your content. Allow expired account login. I'm going to select this because I don't want to make life difficult for my members. I don't care if their account's expired. I want them to be able to log in. I'll leave the membership renewal page empty until the next lesson when we're dealing with all the other pages. If the bookmarking feature is selected here, it puts a little bookmark link on all the types of content that you've selected here. But I found put the little bookmark link there, but I couldn't get it to work. For my site, I'm using Sensei's Lesson Completed feature, which allows learners to mark the point they've reached in a course, so I think that bookmarking as well as that is unnecessary and messy. Under WordPress User Integration Settings, select all four checkboxes. We'll be using WordPress roles later to make our menus differ according to whether a user is logged in or out, and this depends on knowing users' WordPress roles. So, e-member members must also be WordPress members. If site-wide protection is enabled, your whole website will be in lockdown mode, and no one will be able to see anything until they log in. You can also exclude certain pages from this, for instance, to allow the welcome page to be seen but nothing else, or you can apply it only to certain pages. The last option here redirects visitors to a different page if they reach a locked page. So the most likely use for this setting is for a private site, for instance on a company's training intranet. But it's not suitable if we're selling courses over the web, so I've disabled that. The next three settings relate to the affiliate platform, so we'll leave those until we get to that part of the course. Leave the additional integration options deselected. Leave the testing and debugging settings deselected, unless you have problems with the payment system later on. And click Update Options. That's the General Settings tab, and in the next lesson we'll do all the rest of the e-member settings under all the other tabs, which are much quicker than this one.